sir. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. What's up, Marte Tag? What's up, Cody? You said no. you want you want to take my Fort Worthless one tomorrow? Uh no. I gotta drive an hour from Arlington to Fort Worthless. What do you mean an hour from Arlington to Fort Worth? Yeah, from the, the area of Fort Worth where it's at. How are you driving an hour? Fifty eight minutes. Get back with me after this and we'll look at it. All right. I say that's not normally something that we do. So that's what kind of raised me. Yeah. No. But I'll do it if it needs to be done. Just um, to. What am I doing? Why is this doing this? It needs to stop. There we go. There. I don't know why, but I need it up there. I know I did. Can y'all hear us now? Yeah, yeah Brian, we could hear you. All right. We can't hear shit. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, because I have it on one. It's not doing this, I guess. Let's turn up the mouse. Boom. What, Josh, no ducks today? No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in my happy place. Dude, you can open up the door. Oh my God, Josh. It is fucking retarded. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that, Josh. My he, he, every oh, time yeah. he calls me, oh, he's yeah. outside with the damn duck. Yeah, I'm like, who is honking that horn? And then as I realized, oh my God, it's Josh Young with his ducks. <laughs> I don't even like them anymore, man. I used to oh, like dude. them. Now they, they just keep multiplying. There's like 100. They're so loud. <sighs> Wow. Duck, geese and turkey ducks. It's weird. Well, it sounds like you got dinner for the next hundred days. <gasps> I'm that too, with the apocalypse. Hey, Cody, text me that freaking lady from Surefire or whatever, because I'm gonna fix and call her tomorrow. Okay. If Dennis still hasn't got what he needs yet. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go. All right, I guess this is everybody that's coming. Well, I mean, if somebody comes, it's six, somebody seven, joins later, later. I'll just okay. So something that John wanted me to cover to make sure that we were all fairly comfortable with Let me. Uh, oh, that's what it was. I was in the middle of trying to share my screen. Uh, up here, close out all this extra stuff. Oh, look at Marty's little puppy. <laughs> He's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Sweet I agree. Marty is a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay. Sorry, unknown. I don't know what the heck is going on. Okay. We're just going to say desktop to share. Oh, hey there, Joe. Why is it not? Yeah, yeah, you look a little laid back there, man. What, what, what was that? You look a little laid back. I said I'm in my happy place. I meant <laughs> this is where the love goes down and everything. This is, this is a uh, the margarita. Oh, there's Corey. Okay, let's try that. Ha. There. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was going crazy there for a second. I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. Um, and then, okay. So, all right. So you can see my screen. 
So something that John wanted me to make sure that everybody understood is that when we are in the when we're in the test and the actual exam come February, the IRC is on. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. The IRC is on Connect Team. So um, Madeline has put the CSIA study resources on there, and I'm going to update it with more stuff. But when you click on it, there's a section that says printable PDF. In that is the printable version of the NFPA and the IRC. There's the chimney brochure and the National Fuel Gas Code. So we've got all of that stuff in there as far as reference material goes. Right? Um, we're going to let this load. So John wanted me to make sure that I kind of went over how to search for this in Connect Team. So you don't have to download the PDF separately. You don't have to go to any separate links. You don't have to go outside of Connect Team. Inside of Connect Team, when you click on the CSI study resources, you click on the printable PDF selection, then you click on the 20, uh, 2018 International Residential Building Code. When you click on that, then it comes up with this IRC book. It takes it a second to load because it's a thousand pages pretty much. As I was gonna say, so we'll just have it printed out at the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get Becky and Gina on that tomorrow morning to start printing out copy. Okay, so right here in the top left hand corner of the IRC, there's a little magnifying glass. And if we click it, it pops up with a search bar, and then we can search anything so if it's asking us about electrical uh, conduit you can type in the word conduit and then it comes up and it tells you that there are <coughs> let's see here matches are 254 so wiring methods it mentions conduit and you can just click there's these little left and right arrows right here next to the words you just typed in not the ones above it that goes page up, page down. The little left and right arrows are going to take you through everywhere in this book that, that says, says conduit. conduit. So if we type in chimney, and not chimney. No, it's chimney. Yeah, chimney. chimney. Yeah, chimney. Or if you read, if you read the side of my truck, it's chimney. <laughs> so chapter, well, at least I get it off. I get it on. Yeah. So chapter 18, chimneys and vents. Uh, there's also chapter 10, I believe. I think it's chapter 10. Maybe it's just chapter 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's 10. more than chapter 10. There's chapter 10, 17, 18, I think 20 and 24. Yeah. So there's a few chapters, but it talks about everything. So if it asks for a specific code reference, like the 1023 code on chimneys, it you know it talks about this is talking about crickets here. So in our testing, when it talks about um, when a cricket should be suggested, Isn't it like 48 inches wide or something on the base of the chimney. If no. it's 30 inches uh, wide, uh, Josh, you're wrong. Hey, I was close though. No, sorry, you were off. So it says right here. Oops, that's too much. That, uh, it says right here, chimney yeah. shall be provided with crickets where the dimension parallel to the ridge line is greater than 30 inches and does not intersect the ridge line. The intersection of the cricket and the chimney shall be flashed and counterflashed in the same manner as normal roof chimney intersections, crickets shall be constructed in compliance with figure blah, 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 who cares? So that's, John just wanted me to make sure to go over all of that with you guys. How to get there, basically. Yeah. How to find it. Yeah. So it's, again, if we go speed. See, I just wonder how well our internet's going to work because it's slow for those guys at the office to begin with. And how's it going to work when you got another 16 people trying to be on at the same time? Well, I brought it up to Joan today of 
we're supposed to have a laptop for everybody. Yeah. So everybody that has a laptop needs to bring it, and I guess then we're going to have to buy some or something. I don't know. We'll have to do something. Cause yeah. Everybody's going to okay. buffer for like the next four or five minutes while you're looking for the answer. So um, the in the feed, the CSI study resources are here. You can also click on it here. And again, you just go to printable PDF. And then there's the 2018 IRC. And it's just right there, completely searchable. So I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that. The NFPA is the same. When you click it, it's going to come open. It's just a link. So it comes open and accesses it from a website. When you're here, the way to search is control F and it will bring up a search bar. Just like that. So control F. And then if you type in the word cricket. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it goes away. Let's see here. That one's not doing well. I don't know why. I'm focusing on glasses. Like I'm still squinting. They're wrong. <coughs> okay. But that's, that's, Oh, there we go. Now it's doing it. Okay. And then it's the same control F and you can you can find everything in this one. But the main one is going to be the 2018 IRC. So it's um, this is the one that's going to have its own test on. You're not going to have to really search stuff in the NFPA book. You're already going to be expected to know that. Um, but does everybody have kind of a basic understanding of how we're going to get into now we're going to be getting into the, the IRC and how to access it and how to search in it. Yes. Does anybody need me to go over it one more time? No. Okay. And I can't see anybody. Well, I moved it way over here. Can I move this back over this way? Now I can see people. Just trust us. We're here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it put it off into a little I, 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 tiny radio, not TV. So, uh -oh. all right. So that is that. Now, uh, let's see here. So, I've made a Quizlet. And I've gone through all the answers, and I've, Corey and I have triple checked every answer to make sure it's correct. This is uh, the 152 questions that are on the Surefire exam. What uh, What's really nice about doing it in Quizlet? It's free to sign up for Quizlet if you just want to be a reader. You don't have to do that with this one to just go through everything and click on it. Um, if you want to do all the special stuff I'm going to show you here in a second, um, you do have to sign up for it, but it's free just to view it. You don't have to sign up for a monthly plan or a yearly plan to do it. Um, the way that I've done the Quizlet, though, is it'll say, what is corbeling? And then when you click on it, it I've got it set up to show pictures. So let's see here. A cricket is designed to do what? And then I've got a picture of a cricket. So it's not just going to give you the information. It's going to give you the picture to go along with the information. Mm, nice. Which I like more than the other Quizlet because it was just throwing terms at you and without having a picture to go off of. Um, it's, it's a little rougher. So like, um, so like this one here, when a round flue is used for the lining of a fireplace chimney, the proper fireplace opening to flue size ratio should be. It says 12 to one. And then I got the 
NFPA code 7.1.11.3.1, round chimney flues shall have a minimum net cross-sectional area of at least one twelfth of the fireplace opening. So if I couldn't find <clears> the <throat> representative picture, I just got the actual. So like this one here talks about when the opening of the fireplace is six square feet, the extension of the hearth should be 20. Yeah. And then I got the uh, I got the little hearth picture that kind of goes over. Nice. So you you'll be able to pull it up on your phone. You'll be able to use the Quizlet app on your phone or uh, on an iPad or on your computer. Um, so this one here, the inner surface of the smoke chamber shall not be inclined more than 45 degrees from vertical. Same thing, it shows 45 degrees max. Okay. Okay. So you may now applause. Woo -woo. Yeah. Okay. We only see five though. I'm going to post this one to connect team. Okay. Well, we're on number eight, nine, ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, we're passing 30, passing 40, <laughs> passing, here we go, there we go. When constructed of standard brick without a fire brick liner, uh -oh. chamber wall thickness shall not be less than. Eight. What's the answer? Eight inches. Eight inches. And it's right. Smoke chamber wall thickness online is smoke chamber wall thickness there's two here so this is an irc so it's six is, is a smoke chamber cho, smoke chamber wall thickness but for unlined walls it yep. is eight correct yeah lined is six the other one's eight mm -hmm. so and then there we go use that with like the side walls and the back wall of the fireplace where yeah. it's eight or ten yeah. well yeah unlined is ten right um but so that's the flash cards there's also let's get in here oh i don't want to do that that's annoying i don't like that one um and that's just on connect team it's going to go on connect team yes perfect so there is a practice test and you click start practice test and then it literally is set up like a test so it says, when the opening of the fireplace is six square feet, the extension of the hearth should be 20 inches. 20 inches. And then you just go through and you answer them all. And then at the end of it, it gives you a test. And this does it in blocks of 20. Uh, I set it up to do that because I knew not everybody was going to want to sit down and do 152 questions. Right. So you do a block of 20, you check your answers. You do a block of 20, you check your answers. So if you've got five minutes, you can sit down and kind of run through some and test, right. you know, and then if you want to go back through and do it again, do it again, do it again, you can always do that. Um, for, for other people that would prefer uh, video games, Josh? Good call out. I, I do prefer video games. So it throws a bunch of stuff out here, right? So according to NAPA 211, solid fuel burning appliances can be installed in a garage. Negative. It depends on how no. big the garage is and who built it. Nope. It cannot. It is never. It is 13.2.4. Solid fuel burning appliances shall not be installed in a garage. And then you take it and you match them up, just like playing Mahjong, and they go away. Oh, Tucker just fixed our camera. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think of our ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> um, Tucker. <and> there, <laughs> our, our cat did something. So There's this game That's here, Gravity. You, put it up. you can set the um, difficulty level, answer with the term, random definition, rent, or the term or whatever. You click start game, and then it says, there, uh, the area of an eight inch round pipe is approximately boom. Uh, uh, 50, I think it's uh, 50 50 inches. Inches. Yeah, square inches. Do you have to do the square inches? Yeah, 50 oh. SQ. So it's whatever the term is that's the correct answer. Oh, sweet. That's like Galga. You have to memorize the terms exactly and type them in exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was asking. If you just said 50, you'd be wrong, right? Yeah. So okay. But it, that's why it's important to know because you had the right answer, but you didn't type it faster than Yeah, I didn't type it fast enough, exactly. All right. So, oh, so like but funny. anyways, there's a lot of little things that you guys can go and play and do and all of that in nice. there. And it's available to anybody that has the link. So once I post the link in Connect Team, you guys will be able to go through and do that. And it's literally the entirety, the whole 152 questions that are in um, that are in the CSA exam prep on Surefire. So okay, so that's the practice test and the, the Quizlet, because those are different questions on Quizlet than yes. Okay, so oh, that's Quizlet, and then this is the practice test from Surefire. Yep. So if you're not already on Surefire, you don't need it. This is the same practice test. And then with the books that we have between the books that are on um, Connect Team and then the, uh, the Chimney Inventing Essentials books, everybody has the access to the same information. Right. So if somebody's not already on Surefire, they don't need Surefire because they've got all the same information that you need to pass the test. So that's the right. book. Yes. It's the NFPA, the IRC, the National Fuel Gas Code, and then I've got the practice test on here. Is the CSI a handbook we're getting going to reference all of these, or will we still have to? No, CSI handbook doesn't reference a lot of specific stuff. It it more focuses on how to do the job and what to know about the job. The NFPA 211 is the code book and the IRC is the code book and the NFPA 54. Standard. Those are your three code books. This is just a basic training guide. Okay. So do so we have the, it, the, uh, the NFPA 54 handbook available as well? It's on Connect Team. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Oh, just, just asking. So on Connect Team, blah. I hate that I have to log in every time I go to it. So in the CSI study resources, printable PDF, National Fuel Gas Code, and it's right there. Okay. And it's the same thing. So if you look up fireplace. What are you doing? Let's see here. Chimney. Nope. Vented appliance. The 211 is all the stuff that you talk oh. about. This. Yeah. The FDA 54 time. is not really what Stop we're even going to have to worry about. Oh, it hadn't loaded yet. That's why. What are you doing? I understood. We're, we're going to be tested on the, the gas section of the NFBA 54, at least as far as it pertains to class. B yeah, typing. there's, yeah, so like typing and sizing methods, um, some of that has to do with the NFPA 211, but the IRC and the 211 are going to have 99% of everything that you need. Okay. Really, it's going to have 99% of everything that you need. So with that, this is your study guide for the CSIA information. This talks about um, dealing with animals, proper ways to sweep chimneys, proper ways to deal with customers, proper ways to be a call center representative. All of that information is here. So the proper way to do the job is here. This is your chimney Bible, codes and standards. This is the very dry read of, you know, a brick consists of blah, 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 right? That's what this is. This bad boy is the IRC. And this one here is what really puts it down on paper as to a lot of the uh, clearance to combustible information, which is also in the 211, but the IRC is going to reference a lot of that. And the IRC portion of the test is going to deal with searching the IRC. 
Um, something that I want everybody to know for the test, and this is something that that always surprises people. When we get into public housing or low cost housing, the IRC is not gonna be your reference material, okay? When you get into public housing, low cost housing or mobile homes, the NFPA 211, the NFPA 211 and the IRC are not the books that you reference. It is going to be the local codes set forth by HUD which is the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So if you go into a mobile home or an RV or any kind of public or low income housing, you have to make sure that you're cross-referencing everything that you know right, right. with HUD. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna ask, there's a question in there that says, um, Mobile homes are 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 uh, must follow a stringent code set forth by the blank, and I think it says International Residential Code, the NFPA 211, the NFPA 4, and HUD. Yep. And on that one, HUD will be the correct answer. So, mobile homes, RVs, low-income housing, public housing like the projects, that's all controlled by HUD. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So um, I know a lot of people have gone through and they've done the practice test and they've been working on the Quizlet and everything else. Does anybody have any questions pertaining to the information that they've seen that they want defined better or that they, they need explained why something is? Better? Yeah. That one question that was um, twelve nine four, and if the connector is correct, yeah. Did you did you find the answer on that? Um, no. I'm trying to be replaced. Huh? huh? It needs to be replaced. Is that the answer? No. No. Yeah. It's it's clearance to combustibles for a thimble and a masonry wall. Oh. Is what. 12 inches, 9 inches, 4 inches, or it depends on if the thimble is cracked. 12. It's 12? Yeah. Okay. I thought so you were talking about if the thing was whatever, then it's like it says, yeah, it has to be replaced. But no, okay. Brian says it's 12. Yeah. You want me to show it to you? Yeah. Find it. Show it. Find it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hold it up, it. home slice. He's going to find it and then I'll figure it out. I'll find it. Actually, it might have been on that surefire because uh, I don't know if any of you guys went through the whole surefire thing from beginning to end on the chimney essentials. Because there are a lot of pictures in there that yeah. show stuff. I just not, I'm not sure if it's this it's where I found it or not. I think it was. Google it, somebody that types fast. Google it, somebody that types fast. Well, I mean, I don't. So. Yeah, I don't think it's this. It's the here's the thimbles. Maybe in the diagram below it. I know I've seen it before. I'm not sure where it says it has to be 12 inches of solid masonry. Crossing pipe. Two inch clearance from combustibles. And Wait. That was it. Floor protection, wall protection. That's UL 1618, by the way, y'all. Corey said, check the darn diagram, Cody. Uh, here we go. You know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm pretty positive that. Uh, 
says, before cutting the opening into the combustible wall, make sure that there are no electrical wires, blah, blah, blah. Rough opening dimension for combustible wall. It just shows just one. Or is that picture like the one on the thimble? No. This is a thimble. There's another this, I know there's another one yeah. that shows, but I think it was in the Surefire deal. That's Catalytic and Buster. Because they have different stuff that. So the same stuff and different ones of these because some venting, some checking the appliance, some getting this, some's under inspection. <clears throat> Brock, what color is the type one industrial ladder? What? I'm going to hope you said it because what you're, color is you're muted. A type one? Yes. Uh, let's see, there would be blue. Let's see. Hmm. see. Okay, guys, looking for Search thimble. Decorative thimble cover. Oh, this is a thimble. <laughs> thimble regions. Thimble. Yeah. And, um, like I said, I'm pretty sure this is on the ship, right? If I'm not assuming it. Mm -hmm. Might have been. So, it is a pretty cover, though. Okay, here we go. The thimble shall provide minimum clearance required. Where's 9.5? As specified in section 9.5. See, it says in here where required clearance with no protection is 18 inches, clearances shall be permitted to be reduced to the distances in the minimum clearance and column table, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, four. Let's talk about the types of stuff that's going to take place. Location. A single wall connector passes through a masonry wall as a wall sheet and there shall be at least a half inch of open ventilated air. That's to wall pass throughs. It's in there. There shall be one inch between the connector and the protector. Until methods to build. So it's in there. I don't have it. Joe has my NFPA book. Oh, Joe, look in the NFPA 211 book. It's in there. That's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, gotcha. And it states. Because it's not in this one.
See, it looks like it's stating 12 inches. Thank you. All right. Where are we at? We'll do more research on that one. All right. Here we go. Look at this. Ah, don't be good at this. Uh, so on on the uh, in the uh, the two eleven on page twenty seven. Uh huh. Uh, figure eight two 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 seven ventilating symbol from an unlisted metal chimney to combustible material. Or is it eight two two seven? I can I see those little numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. Oh, wowzers, there we go. See, this here looks like it's saying minimum 12 inches to combustibles right there in that little bitty diagram. Right. OK, perfect. So no, 12 inches. 12 inches, OK. So yeah, that's an uninsulated, and then there's solid insulated. And sheet steel chimney connector, minimum 24 gauge, ventilated. Yeah, that's yeah Corey, it looks like it's saying 12 inches right here. Yep. Sweet, thank you. And that's uh, 211 32. Any other questions about it? No. Okay. <coughs> oh. our due diligence with that one. Um, <coughs> also, this little chimney brochure that's in here has got information on the factory built fireplaces and on the masonry fireplaces and a lot of those same codes that you guys are looking for are in there as well so is that one parging picture you're going to end up back on our inspection report which parging picture the one at the bottom right mm -hmm. Yeah. That one there? Yeah, the after one. Um, I believe that's the one that's on there right now, isn't it? That one that shows it's still stagger stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, that saves us a lot of heartache of trying to yeah, explain to and that's, why it's smooth as that's baby. Something that's something that we're probably going to be changing. Right. Because once we're actually certified and we know better, air quotes, um i for sure it will be a smooth one and we're going to change the parging to include a back wall rebuild and taking the damper out and then putting it all back so instead of three grand it's probably going to be like five six grand right it's well, that, be hand that would have to happen for a smoke chamber parging as well yeah because it's not to create, that. to create the other picture that we removed from our chimney inspections <laughs> yeah so that was, I took the, I took the old one off. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it replace me. it with that one. Oh, yeah. from that. Well, the other one hadn't been on there in forever. The other oh, okay. No, the one that shows that a smoke chamber is just perfectly smooth, like a, like somebody who just like painted a wall. That's what the guys are selling or we're selling. And then the techs go out and do the job and there's absolutely no way they can take that stair step and make it go away. Oh, the worst not. It's fireproof. Everything's done correctly, but they can't take the stair step away. 
the corbin. <coughs> the corbin, correct. Corbin, exactly. Right, the corbin. So unless you can hand pack it upside down, which is part of that or anything like that, which is what he's talking about. You take, you have to take the whole back well down. You have to take the damper completely out of it and everything to be able to stand up there to do it. Or you change it to, on the inspection report, you can change it to that picture that shows the before and after. Well, it's prefab. Hmm. Yeah, and see, we have this picture on here now. Right. Yeah. But we also have the one that looks like it's just been done, came right out of the, shack, the factory showroom floor, if you will. No, that one's not on there. Not anymore. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, the the original, the super smooth one got taken off the report like a year right. ago. No, I promise yeah. I could pull something up a month ago. Where it was yeah, there. a month ago he had a call. Like three weeks work. ago. I'm yeah. doing shit with this stuff right now from clients. Yeah, yeah, he is. I mean, but my point is, is the one that's on the brochure is a really good one that could go on the inspection report. Well, no, we're show not. Show before that. and after. Well, yeah, before and after. That's the way it used to be. And Chad originally had it that was extremely smooth. And mm. I changed it to one that was step outs like a year ago. Wow. That was that showed this. It was that same picture that I've got in the brochure. Because that was that's what John wanted it. But we're not gonna go back to showing it step outs and then you know, glazed over with still step outs. We're we're gonna it'll it'll go back to showing the smooth one because that's how we're gonna go back to doing it. So we're going to go back to breaking down the back wall and taking out the damper and parts in the smoke chamber instead of just parts in the smoke chamber. That's going to be the you can't you can't properly parts the smoke chamber with a gun. You just can't. It's, it doesn't physically happen. So going back to doing it the right way. Yes. Okay. Because there's there's no way to get in here. There's not a way to get in here. Every every layer that you build up over that is just building those step outs continuously. And there's not a way to get in there through the damper and smooth all of that over. So the way to do it correctly is to take out the back wall, take out the you know, couple of bricks on the top of either side, pull the damper out, and then hand pack those step outs and then smooth it all over up and down on both yeah. sides. When we do that, are we going to risk damaging the damper? Or are we going to be able to reuse the place? It'll go back in. Okay. And if it's damaged in the, the event that we're doing this work, is are we going to replace it? If if for any reason it gets damaged, probably have to do a top mounted damper if we can't find another one to fit in there. Sure. So, but that's that's where we're getting to. Is we want to do stuff. Chad wants to push us to be the best way possible. And if we're going to keep sticking around doing this, the way that we've been doing it on some of this stuff, it's just not going to be right. So okay. we're going to start doing it right. And it's, it's all on how we talk to the customers and everything else. So that's more of a sales meeting issue, not a, not a training thing. Um, okay. As far as, in connect team um oh she didn't upload the new one so the study session link option that's in there when you click it it will open up the videos inside of connect team for everybody to watch so i guess she didn't put the second one on there yet um and then tonight will go on there that way if you guys want to re-watch it later all of that information is going to be in there for you you can go back and re-watch it you can study and you can review over all of that so, um, getting into it, 
just real quick because that part of the review is taking up most of it. Um, does anybody know where in the NFPA it states that a chimney, how often a chimney shall be inspected, I should say? Yes. Oh, where it's at? No, but I know the answer. You don't know where it's at? No. All right, Becky, find it. Find no. it, Becky, find it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have a book. Okay. So, um, and this is something that I was going over with Brock earlier. Okay. So, just so that everybody can see it here, I'm going to blow it up nice and big for everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, that went down too far. <laughs> There we go. All right. Oh. Yeah, but I need to know where. Nate. I'm going to say 15. Oh. It's in there. It's in there. Oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to say NFP uh, to 11, uh, 15. 14.2. 14.2. Chimneys, fireplaces, and vents shall be inspected at least once a year in accordance with the requirements of section 15.2. So it's in chapter 14, 14 under maintenance, okay. where it talks about how often the occurrence is. And then one of the other questions you're gonna run into, where are we at, where are we at? There's all the inspection. It's on our inspection report, it's on the master services warranty line item. Here it is. 15.4.1. So it's one of the questions on the practice, practice exam is how uh, it's going to ask you to select two answers. And it's going to say the NFPA 211 recommends inspections and it says select two answers. And one says, I think when it's needed, one says every month, one says annually, and one says um, whenever you sell a house or transfer. Up on the sale or transfer of a property. So, annually or sell a house. So on the sell a house or transfer, it's 15.4.1. And that states that upon addition or removal of one or more connected appliances or upon replacement of appliance with uh, one or more of dissimilar type, input reading, blah, 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 blah. So if we are adding or removing a device or if we're changing the device in any way, um, or if we are going to discontinue usage of it. So for the customers that want to just close it up, I don't wanna use it anymore, what's it gonna cost? This states we still need to do a level two inspection. Right. Also prior to any relining, of a flu or replacement of the flu lining. So if all they want is a liner estimate, we still have to do a level two inspection. It says upon sale or transfer of the property. So great grandma died, she left you the house. You still need to get the inspection done. It still needs to be a level two. Or after a building or chimney fire, very important. They like had a flu fire, they want you to come out and take a look at it, level two inspection. Corey has one, Corey, that he's supposed to go to on Thursday, and the lady called in to cancel, stating she didn't want us to come out because there was a house fire. But it says right there, after a building or chimney fire, weather or seismic event or other incident likely to have caused damage to the chimney. Lightning strikes, high winds, tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. Uh, your mother-in-law got drunk and ran into the side of the chimney. Any stuff like that needs a level two inspection, right? She had a house fire, though, that does not pertain to the chimney. That's why she canceled. But it doesn't say if there's a building fire that doesn't pertain to the chimney, you're okay. Right? right. She has... So, but hers is a B vent, so we can't do a level two. But I'm saying right, in right. that case, if they called in and said, hey, right. I want to put off my inspection because we had a house fire, that's when we can reference and let them know 
Well, according to the National Fire Code, if you've had a house fire that's even on the other end of the house, we still need to inspect the chimney because right. if that amount of excess of heat in the attic structure spread to the chimney, that's still what we call a sudden event. And the sudden event is our thermal event. And the thermal event is what cracks blue tiles and bricks and everything else. Right. So that's, that's, that's why. Um, and then it says, uh, at other times, as indicated in 15, goes into, we're not going to get into all that. But that is um, when it asks, there's going to be another question in the practice test that asks, like, Andrew, um, Andrew wanted to use his fireplace, but he's concerned after a hurricane hit his house, should his chimney be inspected? And the answer yes. is yes. Yes. Because it's a weather related event. Yep. So anything that is going to affect the house or the chimney that's a major event, it needs a level two inspection. So yes. even if the house started to settle, that's still a weather related event because the ground is giving way because of erosion, chimney should be inspected. Right? You okay, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Questions, comments, complaints. What do you guys got? I got nothing, but I do. Well, actually, I do, Cody. Okay. okay. So there are on the practice test 100 and what, 54 or 45 questions? 152. Okay, 52. If we're only doing eight per night, the quiz is going to pass us up before we even get done. How are we going to like, it's going to be, it's going to be practice test time before we even get done with this. Right. And I'll have the practice test on connect team for you guys tonight. Okay. And you'll be able to go in and go through it and go through it and go through it. Like I said, I've got all 152 questions. Um, whenever I've got one of the trainees in the truck with me, they they're going down the road and we're going through every question. It takes us a full day to get through the test. Right. But right, they're right. doing that. So um, like every night, every Tuesday and Thursday night after we have one of these, I go back and I review all the questions and I go back through it. And I think even me, the highest score that I've made so far is a 93. So and I still get tripped up on a couple of little wording stuff. But it's stuff that I'm going back in and I'm reading it again and I'm making sure. Right. Uh, some, some of the wording will trip you up and make you second guess yourself and you're like, uh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like, yeah. It, what, what was it? Uh, the ones where it talks about what's required in an inspection. When you get into those and it's like inspection level, blah, 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 requires this. Or, you know, uh, Inspecting a chimney using basic hand tools and ladders is what level of inspection? And I'm thinking basic hand tools and inspect and ladders. Right. That's a level one for sure. Nope, it's a level two. No, it's a level two. Two. Yep. Yeah. And so I, I, I had, first thought it was one two. Yeah. The way. Yeah. And then when it talks about fire stopping <laughs> should be inspected in what? And I'm like, well, heck, every time we get in the attic, if it's a prefab, I'm looking for, for the fire stop. So it's a level two. No, fire stopping is a level three. Level three. three how do you that's where you're supposed to tear stop. the walls open to make sure that the fire stopping is right. hard on the bottom side. Right. Or um, how do you see the fire stopper in masonry chimney? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to tear the walls open. Um, and then another question that's in there. Uh, what was it? It was one that tripped Brock up earlier. Oh, what, uh, what of the options below is not part of sweeping a chimney oh yeah and it was it was uh preparing the inside um turning off the, all uh, gas appliances all gas appliances the customer review or like none of the above that is and brock and i both i mean he he came up with it today based on the exact same thing that i came up with and it was the customer review i mean no. Who the heck cares about the customer review if I'm I said that chimney? too. I said that too. I guessed it wrong. But yep. if you read the book, what they're calling the customer review is reviewing your post inspection findings with the customer. Yep. It's what we call the presentation. Pres right. So it's turning off the gas appliance. 
um, which made a lot of sense once I stopped and think of, you know, thought about it, because you're not going to sweep if you have to turn the gas appliance off, right? Well, at the same sense. time, you're not going to turn somebody's gas stove off in order to, in order for you to sweep the fireplace. Well, that's that's the whole point. Why would you show up to do a sweep and there would be a fire going? Right. It's going to melt your brush. Yeah. Right? yeah. It yeah. says it says in like two or three different places in there that the preferred brushes are the polypropylene, um, the ni the nylon brushes, and I swept a pizza oven that was just a little over two hundred degrees, and I melted the hell out of my brush. <laughs> so why would you so, turn off gas logs to sweep a chimney? It's going to be too hot. Since you said that, I do have a question, Cody. Yeah. Okay. So on a steel liner, that's one of the questions as well. On a steel liner. What would you not use to clean it? Would it be the um, it would, it would, lead, the, the rotators or whatever it was? No, it's no. Uh, the answer on that one is the flat bristle brush. And that's because they're harder to reverse. Flat bristle, okay. Because if you're going in, I was thinking no, like it's the one with the chains. I, yeah, I was thinking the chain one because it would beat up yeah, the liner, one, right? We did that one the other night. Yeah, it's it's the chains, uh, the rotary. You don't use a rotary brush in a mason uh -huh. in, in a steel liner because think about a, just beating the shit. We, we found this one, and it was the flipping of the brush. It was the yeah. the wide flat brush. Yeah, it was the wide oh, flat. Um, that was when we were looking it up. It, we literally we had to search for it. We searched for it for about an hour. And it's on the quiz on, on Surefire. Well, and have a hundred percent on every one of them. Because that one tripped me up. Because I was like, but if you use a still, I mean, a rotary thing, it's going right. to beat the liner up. Well, the I mean, you're right. One with well, I have the them. I have a rotary sweeping set that's just the nylon brushes. Um, in the book, though, it says it's the it's the flat bristle brush. No, but okay. it, the question was what not to use. Right, and it was the answer was not the flat bristle brush because it's harder to reverse. That was the answer on the quiz. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't think I'm not here doing this. <laughs> but at the well, at the same time, it also asks. There's one that says. That if a if a lintel or combustible material protrudes three inches uh, from the wall, at what height should uh, the clearance of combustibles be set at? And the correct answer on the practice test in Surefire was twelve. But if you pull it up and you look at it, it's not. It's fourteen. Another one that's on the practice test in Surefire, it says that the uh, the gases the with the hydrocarbons that are the result of combustion ignite at what temperature oh. and the correct answer is a thousand degrees because that's what it says in the book it says it begins ignition at a thousand degrees but on the practice exam on surefire they their correct answer is 1100. Oh, the thousands, right? huh well we just want to so don't try, in other words, don't trust the answer to Surefire. Yeah, yeah. The Surefire ones, we've already found two that, that we know for sure are incorrect. <laughs> so. Okay, <clears throat> so we shouldn't, like... So don't, don't, don't trust the Surefire. Well, trust the go with the sure, don't go with the Surefire. Yeah, don't go with the Surefire. Go with what it says in the book. Gotcha. Uh, always yeah. cross-reference your answers with the NFPA and with the Chimney Inventing Essentials book. Oh, right, right, right. Book. I could have sworn. Let's see here, gas inventing, wood burning systems. I'll I'll find it in here. Corey and I found it the other day. I'll go back in and I'll find it, and um, um. And I'll send it to you where it is in the book, where it says to not use the flat bristle brush. Okay. But I'll find it and I'll, I'll post it in there. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that's weird like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, absolutely. 
Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I'm good mm. on my end. I think Adam's just happy to have his work truck back. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Well, we've been at it for an hour now. Um, uh, tonight was really more of a how to use the system and like, right, which is helpful. John wanted us wanted me to make sure that I had one night that I explained that at least, so you guys could see where the stuff is on Surefire. You can see how to search it on, on or not on Surefire, on Connect Team. You can see how to search it and find the information. Um, but uh, all right. Well, I will let you guys go. Meeting number three down. We've only got a few more to go. Um, I need a real deal feel on who is going to what test. Like I'm sure Houston doesn't want to shut down and send everybody one week. Oh, uh, we can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's not how it works. I need to know who's coming for the second week of February and who's coming for the last week of February. Okay. Uh, I am sending, I've got the final list with names and emails and everybody else um, that I'm sending to the CSIA. Uh, but the last thing that I need before I send that email is who is attending what class. Um, also, I am waiting on a response. I sent a message to John Caesar asking him about what we should expect out of the test. I know there's three parts. I know there's the CSAA part. I know that there is the IRC part. And then I know for sure that there is a practical part of this where we have to have access to both a prefab and a masonry. And um, I'm trying to find out what it is exactly that we need to do um, as far as that goes. I don't know if they're going to make us do that or not. Um, so I am working on that information. So, hmm. there you go. Okay. Yeah. But, well, so Brian will let you know on the Houston part as soon as we get it figured out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a great night. And. Yeah. If we don't talk to you before then, we'll see you on Thursday. Hey. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. All right. Yeah, closet.